All right, anybody out there? <laughs> I want to see who is out there. Hopefully, I want to talk to everybody who is in New York so that they know I will be out there and I'm going to go visit everybody. So, <laughs> so let's see who joins. I Hopefully, I'll be answering questions, but mainly I want to tell everybody that I am so super excited to be in New York especially for drag con like you have no idea like drag con like okay just so that everybody knows i will be periscoping i will be instagramming live i'll be taking mad amounts of pictures and drag con is going to be so super awesome like you you are gonna see everything that i see the fashion the makeup everything and just to let anybody know if you're gonna go see me at DragCon and go for autographs and everything I will have something special for everybody who's gonna get an autograph and a picture at DragCon now I'm gonna have a big set like um, not big but I'm gonna have the red carpet background I'm going to bring um, the uh, divas title so it's gonna be the replica of the divas championship the red carpet background and Ash, come here, baby. Come here, boo boo. Hold on. <laughs> come here, baby. And everybody will get to meet Ash. So he's going to drag con with me. He will look so dapper in his little outfits. So everybody going to drag con, this is what you're going to get. You'll get something special that is very Melina esque. And hopefully, I wish I would have like planned it sooner, but hopefully I will be able to wear some cute outfits. I'm just, I really want to up my game when it comes to the outfits I wear, but when it comes to drag con, oh my gosh, there is no, the, everything's so gorgeous out there. You have no idea. When you go to the convention, um, whether it's your first time or if this is, you know, you've been multiple times, you will see that drag con it outdoes itself every single time, so it's going to be amazing. I will also, in my t my Twitter feed, you will see that I'm also going to Warriors of Wrestling and the the Wrestling Universe the Wrestling Universe store. So you will find um, where that will be. The Wrestling Universe store will be on Friday, next Friday, and um, Warriors of Wrestling show will be on Saturday. But I will be at DragCon Saturday and Sunday, so. Just want to let you guys know. What does it say? Now let me start reading some of these posts. Oh, and also, if anybody's listening who always goes to the Wrestling Guy store, just know that they are changing their location. Um, I'll be tweeting that later on when we find when I get the exact address and everything. But I'm so sad. Like I'm sad that they like changed their venue. It's gonna be a lot better, but at the same time, it's like. The ceiling of fame what's what, what's happening with the ceiling of fame so I'm gonna miss that because I was right next to Jillian and Gail so I was an honor <laughs> hello everybody yes I'm going to comic-con so at this moment on uh, my um, my goal is to be the queen of cons <laughs> yeah I, I've had I have so much fun at all the cons and I know I've been slacking I've been putting pictures I should be doing more videos, I should be doing more Periscopes and um, Instagram Lives. I was better at Palm Springs, okay? So I, I was doing a little bit better, so you gotta be a little bit proud of me. But I will be better as time goes on of sharing all of that with you guys. So, oh, Connecticut, I, said some, I saw something about Connecticut. Well, I'll be in New York, does that count? And that's gonna be next week. Love your makeup on. It's popping. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. That makes me. That makes me feel so nice. <laughs> We're in New York. Can I meet you? Um, again, if you if you watch back after this replays, um, you'll see I'm going to Warriors of Wrestling, um, the Wrestling Universe store, and DragCon. So you should be able to see the links. Um, in some of my tweets in my feed okay so just to make it try to make it easier if you go through my link uh, my feed you'll see links to warriors of wrestling um wrestling universe store and drag con and that will be next week and it's gonna be so much fun <laughs> i'm so excited oh make sure you're there you there of course i'm gonna be there there is no doubt there is no doubt 
Love the necklace. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. Will you be in LA soon? Oh, for those people in LA, I'm going to do the Stanley Comic Con in um October. So if you're if you're in the if you're around town and you're going to do um Comic Con, Stanley Comic Con, I will be there. And for that venue, you know what? If I can, I'll bring the red carpet background and we'll do it. We'll do it up like A-list style, Eminem style for anybody who shows up to Stanley Comic Con. <laughs> Hello, Ontario, Canada. Look at all the love. Look at all those hearts just going up. Hi from London. I miss being in England. You have no idea. I miss it so much. And I'm glad to see everybody. My favorite superhero. Sorry, I go off. My favorite superhero, I can't just pick one. I, I narrow it down to the Trinity of DC, which is so tough because you know I love Spider-Man. I love the Incredible Hulk. Like, love the Incredible Hulk. You have no idea. When I was a little kid, and it makes sense because being a fiery Latina, I would always like say, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Like that phrase was everything to me. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> Hulk smash. Oh, I still have the Hulk hands. I have Hulk hands still. I love those things. You're the best superhero, Wonder Woman. Well, thank you. <laughs> I've had my moments where, you know, grew up thinking that I was Wonder Woman. Like in my mind, I wanted to be Wonder Woman and I was Wonder Woman in my, in my mind. And then I've had some moments in life where, you know, life throws you curveballs where it absolutely sucks. And I'm glad like I'm saying this because today's the first day of Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And it, you know, this is a big subject for me because you know, I've gone through some stuff that made me question my existence of, of being on this earth and you know I've, I've, I've you know I've, I've attempted and now that I've seen what I've overcome and gone through it's huge for me to spread joy spread happiness make sure everybody knows their worth and how much they are loved and those moments where life throws you those curved balls and it seems like there's like why is these things happening why is life so horrible why can especially like the stuff that's going on in Houston hopefully I don't cry right now things happen and what makes us heroes within our minds you don't have to be heroes to everybody else but sometimes you need to stomach up the strength and be a hero for yourself and which I've had to do I've had to do it alone and it's not because my family wasn't there it's because I didn't I'm not one to ask for help. I'm not one to to tr lean on somebody else. In my in my eyes, I always had to do it on my own. Like I was the strong one, and you know sometimes you got to do it yourself. And I see stuff like in Houston and all this. It is the hardest and toughest thing, and even small everyday stuff. I know we have our everyday struggles, but to be a hero for yourself and to understand that. Sometimes, yeah, life sucks, but that's just that moment. It's gonna get better, it's gonna get better, it always does. And you have to find the reasons, like find things that make you smile. If you can't see it and you keep thinking, yeah, what's the point, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have those moments, but no. You guys, there's beauty everywhere. And now after I've like overcome so much, I see beauty in everything. Like when I meet you guys, and that's what this is another reason why I love cons. And I know everybody's like, why don't you wrestle? One, I'm injured. <laughs> but even if I wasn't, I love cons and I will always do cons for the fact that you guys, if you've been in the last couple of cons that I've been to, like I see you guys, I love you guys, I love listening to your stories, I love, you know, talking to you guys, and you are my family, and that means more to me than anything. And if I get to part wisdom, cool. If I get to put a smile on your face, amazing. If you get to be happier than when you left me, then that would be everything to me. But I just want to give back. Charlie the Bear. They're my dogs out there. <laughs> Don't you start too, Ash? But, you know, that's what I love about comms. I get to embrace you guys and see you and tell you guys how much I love you. I wonder why you don't have your own comic. Seems like a perfect fit for you. Oh, man. Direct someone in my direction. Like, have someone go in my direction. I'll tell them. Uh, I, I would love to have a comic book character 
it would be a cross between Wonder Woman and, um, oh, I'm forgetting her name. Oh, there's a show on her on um, Netflix. Help me out, people. Help me out. What? Oh, why am I forgetting her name? I love her. She was from um, Jessica Jones. So cross between Wonder Woman and Jessica Jones. Yeah. Oh, there you guys go. Supergirl. I love Supergirl. And I, okay, I haven't seen the latest stuff, like the recent stuff of Supergirl. That's my bad. I admit I am in the wrong in that. But when I first started watching the show, even though I love everybody on it, and I love that Linda Carter's on it, and some of my, like some people that I admire are on it too. But at first, Supergirl was a little bit whiny. I'm like, okay, you got to live under the shadow of Kal-El. I am sorry, girlfriend. Like, you got to get over that issue. Like, I kind of like, I didn't like that she was, you know, kind of upset over that. Thank you for the compliments, people. You got the look and personality. Little girls and boys would flock to you. Oh, oh gosh. Whenever I see kids, I just want to squeeze them and hug them. Oh, love them. But, oh, I can't wait. Like, I love, like, I, I love being fans of all ages. It doesn't have to be kids. Didn't I stopped watching? Oh, but see, I think it gets better. Um, was it, oh, Chalfler? I can't see in this light. It's like, I am Smallville. Oh, God, I love Smallville. If you look on my Instagram stories or um, Snapchat, just the other day I posted a picture of Clark Kent hugging Lana Lane. Because, or, or Lana Lang. Oh. So he was, he was whole, um, hugging Lana Lang, and he picked her up, and her feet were like that. Like I, I want to say two to three inches from the floor because he's so tall and she's so tiny. But I miss Smallville. I, I love the dynamic between Lana and Clark. I couldn't get into Cl Lois. Like, I love Lois herself as an individual, but with Clark, I couldn't get into it. You still wrestling? No, hon. I, I dislocated my kneecap, and I know that was forever ago in March, but because I keep traveling, like, it's... N I'm just doing badly with my, with my therapy, but it's slowly getting better. It's, be it's way better than what it was. Smallville was my show back in the day. I love Smallville. Do you watch Charmed? Oh my goodness. When it was on, Buffy. I grew up on Buffy and Charmed. Like, oh, I loved it. I loved it. Like, you have no idea. Still looking good? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope people don't take some of the stuff I say seriously. Like, I get, like, I get playful. And just because I kid around, people are like, she really thinks highly of herself, doesn't she? I'm like, no. I, what matters most to me is how I treat people and if I'm a good person or not. So that's what my parents taught me. That's the reason why I love Wonder Woman and characters like that. I love good people, so. My sister loved this shirt from Wrestling Tees. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, that makes me happy. You wish I'd be on Supergirl? You never know. You never know. I would love to be a bad guy. I don't know. Like I, I like being a good person in real life, but I love playing bad characters. I, there's an art form to it. Oh, I love their originals. Think Nia Jax would be a good tag team. Oh, oh me and Nia Jax. That would be awesome. I would really love that. Miss you. Imagine you dominate in the women's division in WWE. Well, yes. Okay. Oh, hold on. Let me get up. I like to sit on my legs. Okay. So this is what I'm thinking here in my mind. Because I get that a lot when I do Q&As. That's another thing about Comic-Cons that you guys would love. Is that they have a lot of Q&A sessions. And you get to ask all your wrestlers and all your actors everything you want. So I get asked that at Q&As all the time at Comic-Cons. And see, you got to understand, the Molina character, she may not be the strongest, she may not be the fastest, she doesn't do flip, oh, she doesn't do as many flippy-doos, she's not a high flyer, but I will find a way, like, 
this is survival of the fittest. Like my character in my mind, and especially the way I, ra I was raised, if you guys, if anybody grew up poor and all this stuff and lived in not so great areas, you gotta use this. It's always about using this. And my character, uh, hey, I may not be able to outpower you. I may not be able to out high fly you, but believe me, I will find a way. I, my my um, ability, my strength, is that I think things out. I find your weakness. I will find your weakness. I will look at all the things that you do and I will outsmart you. And I will play dirty. <laughs> the Melina character, and that's why I loved her, is because she was brilliant. She was brilliant. And she, I don't, she didn't even care if she was hated or not. <laughs> you love listening to me speak? That's sweet. <laughs> Of course I miss Mickey. Yes, I do. I miss her so much. But, you know, we get to visit her and it's once we all, like, have reunions and stuff like that, it's just we picked up where we left off. Um, Melina was freaking greatness. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Often imitated, never duplicated. Which is a huge compliment. Like, I, I see people and I see little bits and pieces of me, but I see it as like they're my kids. And I love to see them flourish into a version of their own with their own flavor and style. So that's a beautiful thing to see. It's, to me, I never thought that, that I would be capable of doing that growing up. And now that I'm adult, it's pretty awesome to see that, that you know, I contributed in some way. Hello, my race, um, technically I am Mexican American, but I did a whole genealogy. I get asked this all the time. Um, it's like a mixture of a bunch of stuff. So when I did the DNA thing, it said I was like everything from North America to South America. And then I'm also, um, I wanna say a huge amount, a majority of European. So there's Spaniard and Greek and all this other stuff like all across the board in, in Europe. Uh, I think I'm everything except, see I'm not, for, uh, don't have Indian, uh, India, blood from India, uh, Australian, um, and Polynesian. But the funny thing is, is have you guys ever done those, um, there's an app out there that takes your picture or will take a picture and it will use your facial features to see what, what look you have, like what your ethnicity is from your look. I get Chinese all the time. I get Chinese, I get Puerto Rican, and I know there was something else where I'm like, what the heck, man? I don't have a lot of percentage in that, yet it always says I'm Chinese, Puerto Rican, and... I'm not remembering at this moment, moment in time. Every, I get Filipino all the time, like from people. So if apps get me wrong, I mean, <laughs> I get Filipino all the time. And I, I, I really thought I was Filipino. Like I really thought I had a huge percentage of Filipino, but when I did the DNA thing, nothing, nothing. I was very shocked and I was like, hmm. Do you omit the um, robot dance? What do you mean, like, the omit, like I don't say anything about the robot dance? What are you talking about? <laughs> Please come to India. I want to go to India. I got a little bit, I like, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna experience like the culture. I wanna see the sights. I want to, I wanna eat the food. I will. I want to eat the food. I am a foodie. I am not as little as I used to be, and I am proud of it because I love, I love food. I love trying food. <laughs> you, you want to see the robot dance? Okay, I will do the robot dance at um, DragCon. How about that? Would that be cool? You guys will tune in for that. Let's see, do you recommend 23andMe or Ancestry DNA? Oh, okay, I did Ancestry DNA and it did work, but I, I actually, I wanna do it again and do 23andMe. Uh, isn't it, um, 
isn't it more expensive but it's more detailed so I really want to to do 23andMe because I think it, it should tell you about your food allergies it goes more into not only your background but you um your DNA like what you're allergic to and everything a percentage of African um six percent I think it's six percent has wrestling affected you physical physical health of course it is I walk I, I sometimes like if I'm not too active like I get up like an old lady and then once I start walking I'm like normal but my joints you know it, it, it plays a, it plays a part but at the same time like I could only imagine the guys who do insane amounts of wrestling for an insane amount of years you know like I uh, my heart breaks because if this is what I felt for this amount of time which I'm okay with I mean pain is pain is pain like I always think I could be worse and I knock on wood that I haven't suffered through anything really bad so I'm fine but it's I always think about wanting to play with my kids the day I have them or you know running for charities because I love doing that and I can't I can't sacrifice that like I think of long term as much as I love wrestling I have enough um, I'm secure with myself to hang up my boots and to watch other people do it and be proud of them you know so it can't always be about me and I understand that about life my opinion on Rosemary and Sexy Stars incident. Okay, I don't know the details, so I'm trying to, trying to keep my cool. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my cool because I don't know all the details, and I'm, I, I always try to look at a scenario and try to be the uh, mature about it. So I have two versions of me: the mature one and the one that's like, oh hell no, like Rosemary. I love her. I love her. It, she is a good human being and an a, amazing wrestler and an amazing character. Like You have no idea how much I love that woman. So, you know, that part of me wants to be a mama bear and just go nuts. But re realistically, I don't know the, the story on one person's end. And I don't know all the details. So I'm trying to see the best in all sides like thinking there's got to be more to the story even though I've heard all of the story I need to hear I think it's a shame I think it's um there's no excuse for it things happen in wrestling it does there is accidents happen um, we sign up for wrestling knowing that at any time we could get hurt this is it's a it's an athletic um, sport slash form of entertainment I, things happen but we are there to take care of each other well, that's that's what we do like I, I try not to say too much because I know people don't like um, we want to keep kayfabe and all this stuff I'm out of it so that doesn't mean anything to me but to, like so I'm trying to keep kayfabe but obviously I'm doing a, sh a crappy job over it <laughs> we are supposed to take care of each other that's it that's it this is our livelihood. This is what we do for a living. And we share it with each other. We have the honor and the privilege to, to make magic with each other. So no matter what your issues are, no matter what you've experienced in life, like for me, I can never go in there. No matter what happened in your day, it's like going to any other job. No matter what happened in your day, you never take it into work. You never take it inside that ring. That ring, we trust each other with our lives. With, I mean, our lives. It's not just the injuries and everything. We trust each other with our lives. And once you ruin that trust, I feel like that's, that's, it's unspeakable. Like, you should not, I couldn't imagine that, that person working again because that's just, you take the sweet, like, how can you do something awful and that inconsiderate and that dumb to the, to the, sweetest person the awesomest person in the whole entire world that's just insane to me and then I don't know if there's an apology being made there should be at least an apology there's no making up for injuring somebody else and hurting someone else um, maliciously if that was the intent but there's no excuse for that but at least apologize at least make it up do everything that you can to be like that was not my intentions anything is show remorse 
But for my, what I hear from people that there wasn't, there was just excuses. It's just an awful thing to see. It's a shame when it comes to this is a family wrestling and whether you're a fan, wrestler, and all of us combined, we are all family. Fans and wrestlers and everything in between. There was no apology at all, really. There, there was like no statement on, on. That's awful. That is so awful. I remember there was this one time, I am not proud of this. Like I take pride in taking care of people. Sometimes people are like, well, I take pride in taking care of people. People can hate me. People can hit me all the way. Like, not that they could hit me all they want, but I didn't care if I got hit. I come back, black guys, um, busted lips, all this stuff. I don't care. I will never complain. This is just what we do. I would never hurt somebody like that. And to see someone do that, what is wrong? Like, what is wrong? What are your issues in your life that you need to take advantage of a person who's saying, here, I trust you with my body. Take care of me. And that you need to find a way to, like, make yourself feel like a bigger person to hurt someone who's not even ready for a fight. If in my mind, if you're if you're looking for a fight, say, hey, I'm looking for a fight. Let's either go to let's to settle it in a boxing ring or let's go outside and we'll hash it out. Like be honorable. If you're gonna fight and act like you want to be a big shot, take it outside. Don't don't do it like a, a, to an unsuspecting person who who is so super sweet. That kills me. That kills me. I was just like, what? Who does that? Who does that? But you know, I don't know the person. Like, I don't know her. Like, yeah, this is just so awful. Like, you know, I don't know her and I'm trying not to, you know, I'm not one to talk crap. I, I can't like, um, cause I know like in the history of my existence in wrestling, people have talked crap about me without even knowing me. And it's kind of like, it's weird because they would act like they know me and they know everything about my life when they never been around me and never seen me, never talked to me, know nothing about my life or who I hang out with. So it's kind of like, I, that's why I don't like talking about people, but that's kind of, when you know, with, Rosemary's just amazing. I just can't, I just can't believe anybody could ever hurt her and not say they're sorry. That's insane. Oh, I love Rosemary. I love Rosemary, like nobody's business. Oh, thank you for saying you love my smile. That's so sweet. Oh, um, Melina split. Oh, okay. So, um, there's something happened to Rosemary. I just saw, I saw footage when I was in Comic-Con Palm Springs. Um, I guess Sexy Star, they were in a match. I don't know if it was a tag match. I don't know what kind of match it was. I think it was for AAA. And Rosemary, um, they thought it was dislocated. Um, she, I think she strained it, but Sexy Star injured Rosemary for shoot, like for real, and did it carelessly. And I mean, it, you had to have been pulling on that arm really hard to to do what she did. Like that, this this had to have been like in her mind. She thought she was in the UFC or something. Like, who does that? Or did she take like an adrenaline shot? Like, what made her do that? I don't know. I am very in shock. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be PC. <laughs> I am really, I know it doesn't look like it. This is, but I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with that. That is not cool. You are very beautiful. Thank you. That is so sweet. Are you a fighter or something? Um, Dave Starr, I don't know if you're familiar with wrestling. I used to be a wrestler, but when it comes to fighting, I feel like we are all fighters when it comes to life. We are, we fight to survive. We fight to, you know, for the hustle of making, you know, whether it's rent or fighting an illness or just making it through the day. We, we fight to keep our relationships. We fight to, but not like fight like we're going to beat each other up. I'm saying we get strong. We strong and we get strong and work for stuff. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Dave Starr. Um, I was in the WWE. So I used to be in the WWE. I think I left around 2011. And if you look at my profile at Real Molina, at Real Molina on Instagram or Twitter, then you'll see like 
I used to be, yeah, I used to be just, just like Google Melina and I'm the main Melina out there. <laughs> I love saying that. You have no idea. <laughs> it's like, I never thought that that would actually happen. So that's why I kind of like, I take those wins when I can get them. Sup? Whoever said Melina, what's up? Hi. Okay, take a look. Oh yeah, I'll still be here. I'll still be here, hon. Mister, this is, now we're gonna get creepers coming on here. I wanna see your bosom. And it's bosom, you put, oh yeah, the bosom. You know what, dude? Not cool. I don't like it when people do that. You don't talk to people like that when you're out and about in reality, so why would you even say that here? Here we go. You only person can say Google me. <laughs> I know, that's awful. You used to hear like that on TV. It's like, Google me, bitch. I don't mean to say it like that. Believe me, like, I don't mean it like that. I don't mean it in a bad way. I just, it's, but it's true though. You can Google me, just my first name. You don't even need my last name. And I think that's pretty awesome. Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> Would you ever go to GFW? You know, right now, I feel like, here, let me see if I can move this down a little bit. I, I'm happy doing my con life. Like I'm, I'm happy doing cons right now, and I don't see me going anywhere else. Like I guess, as I'm very loyal to two people and two things, and you know, people can say what they want about WWE and everything. It, People need to realize that the WWE is a business. You see amazing talent out there, and I get it. Some people, I'm like, why not? Why aren't they hired and all this stuff? It is a business, and they, they make specific cho choices depending on whatever the case may be. I am honored for the fact that I grew up watching WWE, and I got hired by them. And they gave me an opportunity that... I will be grateful for for the rest of my life and I'll be proud of the memories I'll be proud of everything that I've accomplished yeah um, somebody just put um, China that's a shame like I, there's things that I'm like the I can't understand but hey we're not running the business we don't know what's going behind the scenes so who's to say anything but I, I am grateful for what I've done in the WWE and to me nothing can compare nothing can compare unless some some Somebody shows me something that it could be like better. I don't know. Nothing could compare. Not that I don't like watching GFW or Ring of Honor. I love watching Ring of Honor or, Ring of Honor, or PWG or like even um, NXT and all these amazing shows that are out there now. Of course I love watching all of it. But I guess because I watched WWE growing up. That's the only place I ever wanted to go to, so, I don't know. But never say never. Yeah, you should never hold grudges or, I mean, if anybody's gonna hold a grudge for me for saying that, I'm like, hey, look, calm down. I will go wherever I go when it feels good and feels right. <laughs> but right now, I'm all about the con life. Like, I just love meeting all the fans and let's talk wrestling. Let's see, take some care, What's it? it says Cher Cherokee. That wasn't karaoke. Are you talking about karaoke? Um, hey, Mister. Ah, uh, I will block. I will block people. I got no shame in blocking people. Oh, Cherokee Indians. What about Cherokee Indians? Um, love the tweet where the mascot imitated your ring entrance. Yes, Frankie the Firebird. That, yes, that was so funny. I didn't expect him to do that. I didn't expect him to do that. I am so glad they brought the the uh, footage. Hey, Boyo! How you doing, Boyo? I love you. Troll Patrol. I will be blocking people. If you're going to get all... I don't, like, rude? I, some people think that, like, saying rude, crude things are compliments. I would like to know when in the world that you would use a crude compliment, like, or crude compliment like that, and it was ever effective. Like, that. Si hablo español, pero todos están hablando inglés. 
<laughs> so why have a lot in English? But si hablo. There's always one in the crowd. There really is. And I'm just like, oh man, I wish I had your tenacity. <laughs> Cause they keep trucking, like they keep trying. I'm like, dang, you really if if I could take a little bit of that. <laughs> the internet give people courage because they're anonymous. Yeah, but true courage, I mean true it's so true it's like um i've admitted when i like wear masks and stuff and i wear like um cosplay stuff it makes me feel a different way but to be truly courageous like you need to back up with your words and you need to be able to say something to a person and i get some people are shy oh i love shy people because i used to be shy so i i know the struggle but i get how like t tweeting and texting is is an outlet of communication but these people who are being crass, I'm like, say that to my face. Say that to my face and we'll see my reaction. <laughs> I am really, aw, oh, Dave Star, but you're talking and I'm proud of you. It's funny how I keep, I keep finding yours, Dave. Man, loved Eminem's feud with Eddie and Bray. Oh my God, that's one of my favorite feuds. Like, you have no idea. I love that feud with Eddie and Ray. Those are, that's the best one that I have. The best memory. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. No! Ugh! The douches are lucky that people are messaging me because you're so going to get blocked. <laughs> take me with you. Yeah, take you with you. Take me, took you with me to... We're going to go to DragCon, we're going to go to Warriors of Wrestling, and we're going to go to the Wrestling Universe. That's a Wrestling Store Universe, or Wrestling Universe Store. I'm getting it all wrong. Aw, thank you for loving my finisher. Like, I'm really proud of the arsenal of maneuvers that I had. And I used to not do everything all in one, like, all in one match. Like, my goal was to be able to have a huge arsenal, but depending on each opponent i pull different maneuvers out so it's not always the same thing and I, it's just it just i'm really proud of the things that it was unique to me because of my flexibility and all this stuff so i'm really proud of it oh i miss creating magic like that that's what i do miss about wrestling like you know i'm i'm happy with the way life is right now i'm happy with stuff because it's the way it's supposed to be. This is what was meant for uh, for my life. But I do miss creating. I love making magic. Um, I'm going back to MCW. I'm going for the people who who usually hire me to go there. I'm going for that with them for the Baltimore Comic Con, which is in three weeks. But I am going back to the actual MCW arena on November 11th. So I will be, and I will be there with Joey Mercury. So I think maybe the first time I'm making an appearance with Joey Mercury might be at the Baltimore Comic Con. And then if not, then it'll definitely, definitely be on November 11th. But yeah, you'll get to see me with Joey on November 11th. Joey's awesome. Joey's definitely awesome. That's great that you're in a happy place. Yes! Oh, you know, when you're trying to find yourself in life and you have one expectation of how things are going to go, because growing up, I was always happy-go-lucky. I had my little moments of just like, I don't understand this, but, you know, don't you mess with my brother. Like, I've had my little feisty Latina moments. But ultimately, I always, try, I always found good in people. I was always happy, saw the bright side of everything and wanted to see the world and when the world slaps you down and shows you some awful stuff it does a number on you when you're not prepared for it but you know once you overcome that once you see what is possible and you learn from mistakes and you learn from life then you get to be that much more happier then then you get to attack the world with with strength and courage and it, the place that I'm in right now I, I am stoked about it. This is the best, like, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And my goal is to share pieces with that, of, of that, with everybody I meet. Like, I, I want everybody to feel my happiness. And 
I wish I could. Sometimes I think like everyone wonders, why are you so happy? Why? Because I wake up each morning and I'm thankful I got to, I'm breathing. I really do. I have those moments where I'm like, I'm alive. You know, I may not do much sometimes. Like I just hang out with my dogs. Some, like there are days I hang out with my dogs and just Netflix. And even that is like, yes, I am living life. <laughs> Then I'll go out, then I'll like go to different cities and states and countries and of course that is amazing too. But I, anything where you find joy and it makes you smile, got to treasure that. And I want to give that to each and every one of you. If I could like bottle up my happiness and give it to you guys, I would. I am happy to see your feet. When did you see my feet? I guess you're not going to be happy then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just, I mean, those are things you shouldn't be asking either. It's like it's like asking like, oh, let me see your boobs. Like, don't be asking stuff. If I'm gonna show people something, I'm gonna show it because I want to, not because somebody says, hey, do it. We need to learn how to talk to people. Not only women. I'm just saying each other as human beings. We need to learn how to communicate with each other without feeling entitled. Beebs. <laughs> That's the way I say it, beebs. <laughs> but I feel like um, we, we're living in a day and age because we see it. We're entitled to like touch and grab and and like as if like here like we're caveman style. Come on, we didn't go through years of fighting for stuff and wanting to progress if you, as human progress as human beings to just act like that. Like, come on. And we could still be happy. We could still enjoy the day. I'm not saying. I always tell people. I don't say, hey, don't look at, like, what's out there. You know, we're human beings. It, I'll, look at, I'll look at beautiful people and admire things that they, they have and admire qualities that they are. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just if you're violating people's space or if you're being rude, these are things that we need to, you know, think through if we're doing stuff like that. That's all. <laughs> Yep, people are demanding. Yes, they are. But mostly in the States. Mmm, <laughs> good old America. <laughs> I love all your moves that you did. And what is your thoughts of Sasha Banks? I love you. Uh, not only just Sasha Banks, I think everybody in wrestling right now, this is a beautiful time for women in wrestling. It is a beautiful time. And... I do have my opinions when people say, what do you think about the women's revolution? I mean, wasn't that going on since like the beginning of wrestling when the first female wrestler stepped into the ring and wanted to be taken seriously? The, the women's revolution started back then and has been fought and been like going on every year for decades. So before we start thanking everybody in this era, I'm thanking, I, will, I always thank the women from that, those eras because, you know, if I had it tough if, and if I struggled as a female wrestler, I could only imagine what those women went through. And it was a smaller roster to fight for a spot in wrestling. They must have went through hell. And that's all for the love of wrestling. So, you know, before we start going off of that, let's just give props for the women back in the day. I, I'm big on that. I'm big on giving respect and paying um, paying respect for women like that. Um, but right now, it's such a beautiful thing to see that all that hard work throughout all the years and all these decades has is finally paying off. That something a light bulb flashed and it's like, hey, let's give some women let, let's give these women TV time. Really, that's what we've been saying for decades. Okay, but I'm grateful and glad that that the light went on and that the women are getting to do their thing. I, I really believe that, that um, I was gonna say, it doesn't matter about storylines and all this stuff. These women who are out there right now are making it on their own. They've been given an opportunity and they're running with it. Like they are strong individuals prior to this and they are showing the whole entire world with this opportunity, just how amazing they are. So proud of Natalie, uh, Natalie, Natalia. You have no idea. So proud of Natalia. This is this is a long time coming for her, and she deserves it. But I'm so proud of each and every one of those women because they all they all bust their butts for this. All of them. 
whether they're in the WWE, they're in GFW, they're um, in ROH and the women of um, ROH. Like, these girls are amazing. Oh, and the, what is it? The, what is the thing that NXT just did? Um, the whole, well, TNA is GFW, I thought, right? Didn't they, didn't um, TNA turn into GFW? Yes, the Mae Young Classics. The girls in there, I know they're from all these other, like, they're from some of those places, but the Mae Young Classics, they just, just showcase all these women. So awesome. So proud of these, these women. It's amazing. Thoughts on Vince McMahon go? I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I feel like people want to make other people out to be monsters and stuff. He was a great boss. He had his moments like everybody does. He had his, you know, not so happy moments and then he had his happy moments. And <laughs> that's, that was my experience. And I was just like, okay. And I guess I am, I've been good with adapting, well, not adapting to people's personalities. I was never great at like changing myself for other people, but I was always great at surfing people's emotions so I don't take it personally and I don't change who I am as a person. So I, you know, Vince has a lot of responsibility. It's hard to be liked. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, well, no, he's liked by a lot of pe people. It's just hit and miss. I think, like, you know, there's so many people that he doesn't get to interact with everybody across the board. So some people may take it personally, and um, other people get the opportunity to talk to him. But it, it, like you said, he does so much. His job entitles or, or has um, so much. He has so much on his plate. Like, he, it's about business and he's got to do handle his responsibilities so he can't be partying with the boys he can't sit and talk and do all this stuff he's the boss these are some of the things that are the responsibilities of owning um, a company so you look like JLo thank you <laughs> I love you guys she constantly ignore me and I'm here but I am not ignoring you. You have to understand that I just see bits and pieces. And just so people can know me, I'm not big of when people say, you don't like me because you don't talk to me. When I see people throw a tantrum or something like that, I'm just like, I kind of think like, okay, if we're going to play that game, and I don't respond. <laughs> I don't respond. I'm just like, if people are conversational or super sweet, I respond to that. But I don't, um, I don't, uh, what is the words? I'm trying to find the right words to say it. I, I don't like to tell, um, to, to give attention to people who, you know, aren't, who do stuff like that sometimes. Um, the, the relationship with Batista, like I, I'm honest about everything. No, it was not, it was not true and was true. See, in life, people, in life, if I could be with one person, if I could find the love of my life instantaneously and know that it was going to be a forever love, I would be with just that person. I have no wants to like play the field and see what's out there and blah, 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 blah. I grew up in a way where you know, what I was taught was to be with that one person. And, and, and in life, relationships fail. And you'll date somebody and you'll think they're your entire world and you think this is forever and you would want that and hope for that. And then they're gone and they leave you and you're left. And I admit, I was waiting and I thought, no, no, he's gonna come back, he's gonna come back. Bro, he didn't come back. <laughs> so I was just like, okay. All right, and what do you do? Do I just stay single for the rest of my life and never find love? No, when you break up with somebody, chances are you're gonna find somebody else. So I found somebody else who was an amazing person. And everybody doesn't know the scenario and everybody's gonna talk their rumors because back in that time, we didn't put out our personal business in life. And how do you tell the world, hey, me and so-and-so broke up? It's the hardest thing ever, and I get that. But now that I'm older, I will, I'm all about making public announcements like that because 
being in the public eye we take on the responsibility of educating the world educating our fans so that they don't assume certain things and now i'm really good about that but when i moved when i when i broke up with my past relationship i had a relationship with batista and he uh, and i feel like everybody's course in life they it happens for a reason and we had our our um, relationship it didn't last but not because we're bad people or you know anything like that it's just he was meant for uh, obviously so much more and now he's with the love of his life and everything happened the way it should i had to go through all the experiences i had to go through so then i could learn and then one day i know in my heart that i will find the love of my life and i don't believe in like finding rebounds i don't believe in um starting relationships because i'm lonely because i'm not I, I could be alone and be fine but I want the guy, next guy that come, like comes around and sweeps me off my feet to know that, yeah, it's been it's been years since I've been single, and the day somebody turns my head and we start dating, they'll know it's because they were something special. So that's where I'm coming from. But when it comes to Batista, he's an amazing guy. He, I mean, he had a lot of rumors said about him too. I was like, how can people hate this guy? He's the sweetest guy ever. He's a real life superhero like goodness the goodness is so amazing in him and now um oh what does it say make my day and tell me you love your lb lgbtq for okay i put the q in there lgbtq fans of course i love my L lbgtq fans you have no idea i'm excited for for dracon next week no idea i'm going to document everything but back to, um, sorry, I'll go back to the, uh, to DragCon next. But yeah, Batista, he worked hard. He stayed the good person that he is. And he is living proof that good things happen to good people. Like, I'm going to start crying. Good things happen to good people. So when you think like, you know, the nice guys finish last and, oh man, all I do is work hard. And it's always the guys who suck up who, who get farther in life. He is the living embodiment that a good person doing good things and being good to people, being a nice guy and working hard, you know? So I'm proud of, I'm proud of him in every way, shape or form. And I'm so happy that he has everything he deserves in life. Now, what are we gonna talk about next? Let me talk about DragCon. <laughs> Sounds like he's still on his nuts. No, oh yeah, I have nothing but love for him. But I have nothing but love for every every person I've experienced. See, that makes me sad that you would say something like that because, and I get it. I get not everybody has the understanding to see my perspective. Granted, I assume, I guess I can under, I could see why you would say something like that. It's really sad, but yeah, I'm gonna love him for the rest of my life. I'm gonna love people who are good people love them for the rest of my life that doesn't mean anything sexual that doesn't mean trying to get with anybody that doesn't mean being hung up on anybody it means that you have the emotional capacity and you're mature enough to say you are a great human being and i want great things for you that doesn't mean that i have to be a part of your life like people come and go and you treasure the moments you have with people and you share great things with uh, like with other people in your life. Like I have best friends and I have so many great people in my life. I would hope that other people, you know, I was good enough towards people that they want the same for me. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with still loving somebody who is amazing to you. To be able to have that kind of love, you'd be so blessed and honored. How old am I? I am, I'm 38. I'm 38 years old and I'm proud of it. I, uh, <laughs> I know I'm going to be the type of person that was like, like, damn, I'm 38. <laughs> but I am so proud. Like, that's another thing that I hope through um, whoever follows me through Twitter, Instagram, and all my social media. When people are like, damn, girl, you got older no duh everybody's gonna get older like <laughs> is this nobody stays the same age some people's dna has them aging better than others some people you know and, and it happens but what we need to do is understand the fact that and educate the world 
that we all get older and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You could still have fun. You could still have personality. It's not the end of the world. And how rude. You never ask a lady her age and manners. Oh, it's true. You're not supposed to. That's what we're taught. But I'm the kind of person that, eh, it doesn't matter. I'm proud of the way I look at my age. <laughs> and I would like to, like, and hopefully if people see my personality and everything, that I can make other people be okay with when they get to my age. So don't think it's the end of the world. It's not. You know, there's life. After your, your teens, there's life after your 20s, and there's life after your 30s, there's life after your 40s. Like, my mom is proof of that, too. So it's beautiful to see that, hey, no matter what age we are, just have fun. Be happy. That is all that matters. Whatever your age is, don't be like, oh, my God, I'm getting old. Just be like, hell yeah. And I still, and I still, I'm an amazing person. <laughs> you look mature. Compared to the way I was before, I was like a little baby. This is a little baby. And now it's kind of like, I may not always act mature, but I'm glad I'm a little bit more mature. <laughs> you are amazing. Thank you. I wish the names came out stronger so I could say your names. I love you guys for that. Thank you for being here and doing the Periscope with me. How long have I been on here? It's like, have I been on here for like three hours? Aw, why are you saying um, trash, trash stratus is rubbish? Eh, you know, okay, I love all my fans, you guys, you have to understand. I love you guys with all my heart. For people, when I was in wrestling, people hated me, so it se seemed like people wanted to kill me type of deal. Like, people hated me. And to see all the fans that are out there now who love my work, who love me as a person, you guys mean everything to me. I think it's the sweetest thing, and I thank you for that. But, <laughs> I know people say stuff sometimes, like I, I say stuff in, in the British way, because I spent so, so much time with you guys. Like, I pick up stuff. <laughs> but back to, like, the fans, thank you. But, let me, let, if you're going to represent me and be a fan of me, Please, like, I'm not about talking trash about other people and stuff. And it, it, everybody has different tastes and stuff. Some people's favorite music is going to be different than other people's favorite music. And, you know, we're all not going to like the same thing. And we're all not going to like the same person sometimes. And it's nothing to them as a person um, in real life. It's just their character. So we don't know how, you know, some people are in real life, like um, Trish and everything seems like amazing and everything and the character maybe like the character was awesome in my opinion the character was awesome and and if you didn't like the character you know you don't like the character but if you're gonna represent me let's just we'll just be like hmm you're the like you're awesome like just say go straight to the you're awesome part yeah we don't need to talk trash about anybody else to to highlight somebody else's um qualities did you ever get her in, in wrestling? Yes! She was my first um, title match. I'm so, that's when I knew I made it. I was like, oh my gosh, I made it in the WWE. I'm a wrestler now. <laughs> Let's see, women's wrestling fans need to support each other. Yes! You know, I keep thinking like, we don't need, and especially in life too. In life, we don't need to ridicule each other to like, make a statement that some we like somebody, you know? It's kind of like, okay, because I, just because I did the baseball po um, post in Instagram, so don't, everybody who loves baseball and is about your um, baseball teams, don't get mad at me, don't start saying, so-and-so is better and blah, 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 blah. I know, all your teams are the best teams, okay? I just grew up with the Dodgers, so I'm just using it as an example. Um, it's like me say, trying to get across to say I love the Dodgers and then starts bashing another team before I say I love the Dodgers. I, I don't need to bring in any other team. Uh, they didn't, like, I don't need to bring them up. I just want to make the statement that Dodgers are awesome. <laughs> That's it. And it's the same with, like, wrestling, you know? And, you, and, and, and it's not real. Like, you guys, 
It's not real. So when people are like, well, so-and-so is better because of this and this and that because, you know, she beat that person. And I'm like, you do know it's written out and they told us to beat this person, right? <laughs> but you can like their style. You can like the way they move. You can like their look. You can like their attire. You can like their persona and the way they carry themselves. We, we as um, human beings, we identify with people who either remind us of ourselves or... Um, or have like bits and pieces of who we want to be. So I, I think it's a beautiful thing. Sorry if I'm all like pieced out, like don't, don't, don't hate on everybody else. Just let's, let's just not talk about everybody else's, how everybody else sucks. <laughs> how hard is it to remember a promo? That's not like, it's kind of like asking a person, how hard is it to remember a monologue or a scene in acting? You, it's a muscle you need to train. So you just, Get in the habit of remembering remembering but back in our day i don't know how it is now but back in our day it was kind of a combination some people had to remember some people went off the fly and some people were a little bit of both let's see la is best team it is isn't it <laughs> oh my goodness can you touch her once do you ever get strange celeb vm requests I haven't done it in a while. I need to get on that. I should have been doing Solivium today. But I wanted to make sure to tell people about next week. To tell people about, um, what is it called? DragCon. I needed to tell people about um, Warriors of Wrestling. The Wrestling Store Universe. or Wrestling Universe Store. I keep getting it wrong. And about the Wrestling Guy Store moving. I wanted to make sure to tell people about that. But, yeah, I... You know, the only weird things I get, and I don't judge, I don't judge, I'm just like, I didn't ask me, I don't get, you know what, some people think I get weird, weird stuff, but I don't actually. It's just the feet thing. I'm like, really? I want to say happy birthday. And, and, and I'm the kind of person where it's like, I do not want, if you're telling me to expose something for money, isn't that kind of like almost prostitution? So I won't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. If people ask me bad things in, in um, Celebium videos, I just don't do them. I may be a chick, but that doesn't mean that I don't have self-respect. <laughs> it doesn't mean all women do anything for money. Like, we need to re-educate society. I see it like your boobs are more excited about NYC. We need to re-educate society that we do not talk to women like that. And when we talk to women like that, we are awful people. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. Let it be known now, because I show cleavage doesn't mean that I would like to hear people point it out and go, Oh, well, boobs. Oh, my goodness. Come on. You guys have seen breasts before. You know, whether man, woman, like even zoos <laughs> like people have seen or like the creatures i've seen breasts before in life it, it, why do we need to point it out as if we've never seen it before as if i don't get it <laughs> people are so rude people are kind of off in the head sometimes that doesn't mean i don't have hope for you guys let's throw in some positive in there it doesn't mean i don't have hope for you guys i really believe that maybe you're gr good people deep down it's just Come on, really? Melina only loves, I actually do. What was Undertaker like in real life? He's just like a father figure in wrestling. Like he, he's there, he, he's there for um, advice. He, he, he watches all and see, sees all. And he'll give advice, he'll make sure everything goes the way it, it should. He's like a dad, he's like a wrestling dad. Except one that you like highly, like, not that we don't respect our fathers, which we should. I sure do. I fear and love my father. <laughs> but he's a person that you take seriously when he says something. And, and there's no, you know, going around it. You, you respect him, you admire him, and you thank him for everything that he's ever, like, he sees in you and he teaches you. This outfit was worn to get the men going. No. It was worn because I like the way I look when I wear something like this. 
it, it has nothing to do with men and it has nothing to do with women. Like in my mind, I'm thinking, why does it only have to be men? You know, women appreciate other, uh, other women's bodies too. So uh, why does it have to be a sexual thing? Because we want to look good. See, we need to re-educate people that because we see flesh doesn't mean automatically go to sex. That's why some societies can handle a nude beach and some societies can't because they don't know how to differentiate. Dress for yourself and not for others. That's right. That's right. We haven't seen it before. Um, yeah, and when we go to something like that, when a person takes your pictures and all this stuff of your body and puts it in public without anybody's consent, it's kind of like, that's a violation. Do we, do we not understand that people? And I'm glad I'm saying this, people can watch this and rewatch this. And I, I'm sorry to get, instead of being all happy-go-lucky like I usually am and how I'd wanna be most of the time in my life, I need to be serious when I make these statements because this is how I feel. When people take pictures and post it without somebody else's consent when it comes to nudity and all that stuff, that is a violation. You guys do understand that. That is not like, hoo <laughs> funny, ha-ha, and then let's exploit that and then shove it in their faces. That is a violation. A person did that without my consent and now I'm better off, now I know how to deal with it. But when it first started, that was mortifying. If you've seen my interviews back in the day, I would not do Playboy because my body was meant for the love of my life, the person that I was with. That was my choice, that is what I believed in. And some person violated that and threw it all over the internet. And that is one of the reasons, after all these things of happening where, you know, depression hit me, that was a huge part of depression happening even that much more than what I was already going through. So you have to understand that is not funny. That is not something to post and be like, ha ha ha, well, we've seen you online. Well, guess what? You saw my body online without even asking me. You should be ashamed of yourself. I, seriously, the fact that you have to like do that and, and be proud of it is kind of like, it's, it's sad. Which I should be better at positive about it, but I'm still dealing with the issues. So I'm sorry I'm not more. I wish I could be more mature at this point handling that. I'll probably be better 10 years from now in how I feel and deal with that and speak about that. But that's just what I feel right now. That's awful. Let's see. This person right there. I will block you. You should check that. And guess what? Another thing about life, I will have wrinkles when I get older. My skin, um, somebody posted at one point, and it's funny because most people are very positive. I'm lucky to have very positive um, followers. Very thankful to have very positive followers. And we get, we get, what, we, um, what, we get what we give. But um, I remember one person said uh, that they mentioned my veins. They're like, oh, you got problems. Look at you, you're so ugly. You could see your veins. Like, yeah, I got thin skin. Who cares? Everybody's skin is different. Everybody's features are different. Because, what, are we supposed to be flawless all the time? No. I will get wrinkles. I have veins on me. I have thin skin. That's the way I was born. I've had it all my life. I will not change it. No one's going to make me feel bad about it. I am not going to feel ashamed for being the way I was born or looking this way. If anything, I'm going to say it proudly. I'm like, yep, I got weird veins. <laughs> and to me, it's not weird. It's normal. And to some other kid out there who has thin skin like me, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel bad about it. If we have cellulite, if we have, you know, a little bit of a roll or a lot of bit of a roll, no matter what you look like, be proud of it. Don't let haters say whatever they say because talking down to somebody makes them feel better about themselves. That's awful. I, I always feel like people who are negative and very hateful like that, they hate themselves and it, it's a reality. It's not something that nice people say. It is a reality that when people have to point out awful things about another person, it's because there's something about themselves they hate, that they're upset with and they can't handle. And either that or they also are going through a lot of bad stuff and 
being negative towards people makes their day better. And they never get happy, ever. And I feel sorry for them, I really do. I wish that they could find happiness. Melina, can you do the primal scream? Oh, everyone thinks the primal scream is a move. The primal scream is the scream. <laughs> it's the scream. You say that's right psychology 101, but that's just being a human being. It's just something if you pay attention and care about people that you would get from the get-go. You see your veins on your arms. Probably because you're jacked, I don't know. So why did Michael Cole say it's the, it's the move? I don't know, people. I was busy wrestling. <laughs> like That's probably what it was said, but usually I do the scream before the move, so I think it kind of blurred in when they're like, oh no, she's doing the primal scream, which Taz named. Taz named my scream the park primal scream. And so I think when I screamed before a move, that's when he, it started, people started thinking that was the name of the move. Uh, John Lennon practiced the primal scream. Hey babe, you're gorgeous. Would you do Snapchat takeover? What do you mean Snapchat takeover? What, what, tell me about Snapchat takeover. I need to learn these things because if I'm going to do Snapchat and everything at DragCon, I got to know what this is so I could do it. Why doesn't the website remove your photos? Oh, you're talking about WWE or you're talking about other places? Yes, I could still do the splits. I don't know why. I could just still do the splits. There's the heavens above where it's like, you know what? We need you to be flexible. <laughs> never took dance, never took gymnastics. It's just, I was just able to do it. No, I ignore everybody equally. <laughs> Whoever said that, I ignore everybody. It's not just you. Sunset Splits is the name of the move. Yes, it's the name of, yeah. Oh yeah, you got it right. It's Sunset Split. Uh, you know who you look like, right? Are you going to say J-Lo? Because I've been getting that today. <laughs> did it hurt jumping up and landing in the splits? No, it never did. Beautiful smile. Thank you. No, I'm not with Johnny Nitro. It's been, it's been a few years. <laughs> but it's okay. Nose job needed? Nope. Nope. I always think about it. I was like, hmm, will I ever do a nose job? But part of me thinks like, okay, I get people want to look a certain way. And part of me is just like, am I that, you know, am I that vain? Sometimes I think maybe I could be when I'm older. But the reality is, is I'm good with contouring. We makeup works wonders. That's what I did today. But no, with the day I have kids, I want them to see my nose is their nose, you know. I want my family to see their eyes, like in my eyes. So I want them to see how I look, I look themselves and me. So I love that. Yes, I have Instagram. It is at Real Melina. Aw, thank you for saying I look fine. You're such a sweetheart. Yes, if you, I always believe that if you want to do any alterations to yourself, to make sure you do it for you and never do it for anybody else. Because you want the day you leave that person and you're gonna think, I changed myself for that person. Whether it was, you know, the way you are as a human being, the way you look like, the way you dressed, where you moved. Make sure every choice you make is because you're doing it because you want to do it. Not because somebody made you or you did it to please someone else. Because, um, it's so funny, Kim, oh, what is her name now in NXT? Like, I know her, her name is Kimberly. I, I call her Kim, like, Kim. But Kimberly just got a um, tattoo that says, I, like something like, I chose, this is the life I chose. And I kind of think it's true. Every choice we make, whether we did it for somebody else or anything, man, as much as I could get mad at myself for somebody treating me like crap or putting me through hell, I got to look in the mirror and I got to say, damn, I chose this. This is my fault. Like, ultimately, this is my choice. I, Abby Lath, yes. But you gotta always ultimately think like, man, this is my choice. I'm the one who, who chose to go this route with this person. I'm the one who chose to be like, it's so, like this is okay. So we need to take responsibility. Um, who's the best match you had? Mm, 
Uh, I say, I say, um, I, I, I have my, uh, that's my, okay, top two. Top two counts as one. So I know everybody wants me to pick one, but it's, it's always going to be Mickey James and Beth Phoenix. Those two, two matches are the ultimate of all time for me. Those two matches. Please do not fart. Why? That is a human reaction. Don't act like you don't fart. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> to me, and I think fart jokes are funny. Oh, there's a time and place for everything. I can be the classiest of women. I could be the most ghetto of women. And I could be the goofiest of women. I'm the biggest dork. But there is a time and place for everything. And as a human being, just to say, if a person's going to say this and this and that, don't everybody... I, See, if there were a day that that happens to me and in public, I'd be like, eh, it happens. I'm not going to have any shame. People try their best to be very, you know, classy and all this stuff. And you should. You should always have respect for the people around you and not do certain things. It's just respect and common courtesy. But when things happen to people, that's life. It's life. We can't act like farting doesn't exist. And we can't shame people for when they accidentally do it. Whatever, dude. If you gotta say um, terrible comments and make awful comments, then, oh my gosh, you're so tough and so strong. Oh my goodness. Like, that's awful. You should never ridicule anybody, ever. I remember the first time my wife farted. Oh, that's so cute! Okay, the day, like seriously, I really think that that's like a bonding moment. That's really a bonding moment where it's like, we love each other. This is love. This is true love. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh. ah. Stuff happens, like, you know, stuff happens. People, those rumors, and there's other stuff that at some point I, uh, I'll write a book or say at a like Q and A tour, but you know, a lot of stuff happened in my life that is pretty awful and I survived and I've overcome them. So yeah, people saying rude stuff, I'm just like, eh, if that's the worst it's ever going to get for me, I'm cool with it. It could always, you know, I've, I've gone through so much stuff. I've gone through so much stuff and come out smiling. So I'm good. Will you be coming to Australia? I actually need to, I should be messaging um, one of my friends who has a promotion out there. He's asking if I can wrestle. I can't wrestle. I can't. Can dogs get some camera time? Huh? Well, you know, see, does Vince McMahon really hate people sneezing? You know what? I've never sneezed around him, so I don't know. I've never, I never went through that. A lot of people miss it. message me on Insta. A lot of people. So people understand I get a lot of messages and I can't, I can't. I know I'm spending a lot of time right here talking, but um, I can't spend all day, every day looking through all messages and stuff and responding to people. Baby teeth on bottom? No. What are you talking about? Everybody's teeth are usually smaller on the bottom than on top. I don't understand what you're trying to say. This is very interesting, by the way. Interesting observation and things that, out of all the things to say, that's what you had to get said. <laughs> I love it. Good teeth, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I think I should be getting going. I, I really feel like I've been here for three or, for three or so hours. You're pretty, you're so sweet. Thank you, guys. Oh, sorry, person. I'm going to go to New York whether you like it or not. Deal with it. You won't even know I'm there, so what do you care? <sighs> people. The things people say. Bye, sweethearts. Okay, it's time to go. Cheers. I love you guys. Oh, I'm glad. You know, it's been a long time since I've, like, did, like, talking to you guys um, on Periscope or Instagram. So I'm so glad I got to do this. I love you guys, and I hope that if anything that you take with you today, you know, I hope you don't take anything bad that I said when I get upset where I'm like, don't talk to people like that. Just be happy with your day. We could, wherever you are, just be happy that you're alive. 
thank the people that that are around you that they exist and that tell them you love them and just do something that makes you happy don't talk bad about people just do something that makes you happy and doesn't hurt people doesn't hurt people just be happy okay so i love you guys be good to one another who used to say that was it um one of those talk shows it's like be good to one another or something but anywho do that I love you guys and I'll be back again, okay?